we bring you a million important announcements. And some helpful tips and tricks for Valentine's Day. You are going to love the February 14th edition of Stormwatch. Good morning, Volts. I'm Sabrina. As we finally approach the Day of Love, we want to remind you that FFA is selling carnations for a dollar today throughout all lunches. Make sure to pick up a pink, red, or a white one for your sweetheart, all while supporting Ridge's FFA. On a similar note, if you're still looking for that special someone to spend the day with, we've got you covered. Here are some do's and don'ts for this Valentine's Day. Do bring your Valentine a beautiful bouquet of roses. Don't bring her a pot of dirt and expect her to grow them herself. Do plan your valentine beforehand and write a thoughtful card. Don't wait till the day of to choose your valentine. Do go out of your way to provide her with some wonderful chocolates. Don't, well, just don't eat her candy. If you're receiving or witnessing a singing valentine today, you should give your best wishes to the faces behind those lovely voices as the advanced choir is performing at their MPA on March 5th at Lake Gibson High School. A big good luck from all of us here to the advanced choir. We all know that AP classes are supposed to prepare us for the future and for college. But what about those beautiful pieces of art that are hanging in the walls of the ridge? Here's a sneak peek into the lives of the AP art students. While AP art, unlike the regular AP classes or normal classes, they don't have um, end of year exams or AP tests. Rather, AP, AP art students submit a completed college level portfolio that has both quality sections and concentration sections, perfect for college. Our colleges focus mainly on a submitted portfolio that demonstrates your artistic ability and your artistic skill rather than your academic achievement. On National Portfolio Day, representatives from the major art colleges in the country come to review your portfolio. And this is great because you get to have hands-on experience with the people who will reject or accept you into their college. My favorite artworks are the ones that are going to be going into my concentration section of my portfolio. And they represent my interpretation of the human soul. So based on the people that I've met, that's how I interpret it into my artwork. The next ACT isn't until April, but Mrs. Jarenker will begin SAT tutoring on February 21st. But you don't have to wait that long to begin your preparations, as Stormwatch has prepared a little helpful hint for you to get past your math portion on the SAT. Good morning, Volts. I'm Ariana. With Valentine's Day rapidly approaching, I wanted to make sure I have the right date. What would beauty be without brains? I'm going to ask three potential suitors a simple math question. If anyone gets it right, maybe I'll consider them. Are you ready, suitors? If you want to date me, you need to tell me what's half of two plus two. What did these three suitors do incorrectly? First, they thought they had a simple math problem and they rushed into the answer. Well, at least two of them did. I don't know what's going on with the third guy. They neglected to pay attention to the order of operations. PEMDAS helps us understand which procedures to perform first to evaluate the math problem. Since the question is, what's half of two plus two? I must do division first. Half of two is one. Now I can apply the addition component. One plus two is three. Life is about order, so don't forget to follow this helpful math rule. Now, let me go try and find an actual date. Don't forget, Grad Bash tickets are still on sale until this Friday, February 16th. You can purchase your tickets using a debit or credit card on the Book Ticks link on the school website for $115. Tickets must be purchased using the student's name and failure to do so may result in a student being unable to attend Grad Bash with no refund given. After you get your ticket, you have to see Mrs. James in room 2115 for further information. Finally, make plans to bring your Valentine to a night of music and comedy. Our CHS Theater proudly presents our first annual Night on Broadway, Thursday and Friday, the 15th and 16th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Hear hit songs from Hamilton, Chicago, Little Shop of Horrors, and Greece. 
Tickets are $6 at the door. Break a leg to all the performers involved in this very special fundraiser for our upcoming musical, Beauty and the Beast. With all this talk about love being in the air, I'm pretty bummed I don't have a date tonight. Let's see what our uh, students think is their ideal Valentine's date. Well, step one would be to find a date. I mean, you know, Valentine's Day is all about the deeper meanings, you know? If you want to make them happy, you got to get them flowers so they can grow together, you know? Some glue, maybe, so you can bond. Hot air balloon, got to. I want it, receive chocolates, in a restaurant. I feel like as long as you're with your significant other that whole day, spending quality time together and just making that day as special as you can is just perfect. Strawberries, I'll buy a whole bunch of red roses and one white rose and put it in the middle of the bouquet. Ver a las parejas con sus regalitos. A tree, so they'll never leave you. Hot fudge. And it's cool to see how you guys value each other's presence and to see what you guys got each other on that same date. You know, she would turn around and I'd be on my knee, you know, with a whole bunch of, with all those roses. A baby tiger. A bucket of chicken nuggets with honey, mustard, and mayo. I mean, allergy medicine is a must, what with all the love in the air. Take her to a nice restaurant. Don't you think so? I was just going to say take her to Disney, but I mean. <laughs> take her to Disney and the butler. But the butler can't be taller than 4'2", or else he's just mocking me. You got it? You know, one of you has to wear a wig so you know who's going to pay. I just tell her that I love her, you know, make her feel special. Well, that's all we have for today, Volts. On a day like today, remember to tell everyone that you love that you love them. I'm Jorge Texador. And I'm Sabrina. Have a great day and go Volts! As we all focus on the ones we love today, it is important not to stray away from our celebration of black history. One of the most important and effective ways of carrying history throughout time is through written work pieces. Today we focus on one story that has made a mark on black history. The autobiography of an ex-colored man is a fictional story written by James Weldon Johnson that focuses on the life of a young biracial man. This novel identifies hardships the black community had to face during the time it was written and offered a solution to the protagonist by allowing him to get through by identifying with his white side. Although this may seem to make his life easier, the main character not only has to give up the hard parts of being black, but also everything good that comes with being a part of that community. The autobiography of an ex-colored man effectively demonstrates how it may be easy to consider giving up your identity at first, but how hard it actually is to leave behind everything that makes you, you. If you're interested in this very mind-opening work, make sure you stop by the Media Center and ask Mr. Hake for this title.